Hello, everybody. Welcome to Lee Pitts Live. So glad that you uh, put us on your list of things to do and I think you're going to be thrilled as well. We're here at Station 17 for the city of Fort Myers Fire Department. It is a spectacular setting. Shout out to the fine chief of the fire department and all the other staff there that rolled out the red carpet for Lee Pitts Live out here on Six Mile Cypress. We'll be here for the next uh, four weeks. Outstanding guest lineup is coming as well, but we'll start off with the head man in charge, the chief of the fire department, Tracy McMillian. Welcome to Leap is Live, my friend. Good to be here, sir. Always good to get you here spit and polished. <laughs> you heard me say at the outset that this was a spectacular setting. I got a chance to actually get a tour of it and we'll see some footage uh, when you gave me a personal tour. Uh, one of the perks of being Lee Pitts, mm -hmm. but uh, just kind of Describe this new station that we have here as a part of the uh, ensemble for the city of Fort Myers Fire Department. Absolutely. So uh, super impressed with the station. Uh, well, this is really unique how the station came about. So we actually have uh, several of our staff members that are actual general contractors on their off days. Uh, so they were able to actually be a part of the team that helped to design and build this station. So it's not just coming from a architect or design mind is actually also coming from a firefighter's mind. Mm -hmm. So uh, when I look at this station, I say, man, they, they really nailed it. They got everything right. So there's some things on the outside that's actually for our community. Here on Six Mile Cypress, we actually have a lot of people that transverse walking, running, biking. So outside we have some watering stations that's always open for them. There's some air conditioned spaces that are open for people to come in. Uh, but inside we have some beautiful kitchen areas. We have uh, great areas for our folks to actually kind of unwind mm -hmm. and there's a gym. Uh, mm -hmm. We kind of shared yesterday that that gym is required for our folks to work out. They're I think tactical. one hour per day. One hour per day required mm -hmm. per contract. So, uh, and they are tactical and they're athletes. getting paid while they're working out. So yes, that's sir. cool as a deal you can get. Yes, and yes, you're sir. still staying healthy. Go ahead. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And, you know, that's one of my, you know, you know things when we talk culture to our staff, you know, you should be able to retire here healthy, mm -hmm. wealthy, and wise. Mm -hmm. So that, that workout is something that can benefit you in your personal life. But required to be able to tactical athlete, required to be able to actually do the job when those tones sound, to be able to actually perform mentally, physically, as well as even emotionally. So they have that. Then we also have some things designed in the station for cancer reducing type uh, uh, you know, scenarios. So we have some things in there that will actually help to get carcinogens and all those nasty cancer causing elements out of our skin and our bodies. And we also have something that's really cool. Athletes have been doing it for a long period of time, uh, ice baths. And you know, if you start doing the Google researches, you start seeing them popping up more and more. But ice baths are a great way to actually to rehab the body and to keep it in personal, uh, you know, perfect physical shape. So you got some nice sized beds in there too, single rooms. Yes, yeah. So we actually, you know, <laughs> took something from the past where they usually would have the dorm style rooms where you know everybody sleeps there. But we all know, Lee, we know mm -hmm. everyone has different sleeping styles. Some people like sleep with light on, light off, TV on, fan on, snoring. You know, so this actually uh, allows for us to actually try to get as much sleep as possible. So our folks are not trying to do life saving measures being sleep deprived. Mm -hmm. So when we have opportunities, which are not always common, but when we have opportunities to actually get a little bit of sleep, we want to be able to maximize those opportunities to make sure the mind and the body is as sharp as possible to be able to perform. Now you can talk about all of that, that stuff, but the coolest part to me is that room with those big leather seats and that flat screen TV. Come on, <laughs> yes, man, sir, talk yes, about sir, that yes, room, sir. man. It's like a little, little episode MC, <laughs> it's like MTV five Cribs. five-star yeah, hotel. Yeah. yeah, so, you know, we, we try to actually, you know, replicate that. You know, we now call these fire stations. As we shared in the past, we used to call these fire houses, mm -hmm. fire house. And because everything that you do in your house, you have to do here. You mm -hmm. have to clean it. You have to prepare it. But you also have opportunities to unwind. Mm -hmm. You know, people in their houses will have a comfortable couch or a lazy boy yes. or something like that. So we replicate that here because our, our guys, our staff, our men and women spend a third of their life, right, of their mm -hmm. whole career in this station or right. stations like this. So we try to actually make sure the spaces are similar to that of a home to kind of make it uh, more man manageable. When I walked into that kitchen, though, I mean, it's like, yeah. It's like mom's kitchen. Yes, big sir. refrigerators. Yes, sir. Old school skillets. What yes, those, those, What do you call those? Oh, cast iron. Cast, cast iron. iron. Yes, that, yes, I haven't sir. seen those in a long time. Yeah, and yeah. people actually do real meals here, huh? Oh yeah. Well, that's one of the things that you know we're very traditional in that sense that our staff still 
uh, do two meals a day, whether it be you know breakfast and dinner or lunch and dinner. They mm -hmm. still chip in their own money and they go out, they shop, they cook. I see. And we have some folks, man, just some talented you know folks. Some are really? former chefs, you know, who have transitioned into this career. Some people just have a love for for cooking. Uh, so the meals here are are amazing. And the other thing about this particular station that this station is actually uh, built to be a hurricane shelter for city staff responders, first responders, public works, all these other individuals that in time of emergencies, they'll be able to be able to respond out. And so that's why some of our spaces, kitchens and refrigerators are a little bit larger because it's prepared for when those emergencies and we have to bunker down for a period of time or run out of here for you know several weeks, we have opportunities to be able to do that. So mm -hmm. it's built for the day to day, but it's also built for you know that opportunity when things are a little higher in gray skies. I, why this location? in terms of a new station? Yeah, so whenever we do station locations, we always take run data, we take growth, population growth. So we look at how our city is actually growing and, and things are, are moving and we look at the data, we take you know the, the heat maps and we put out, oh, we're having X amount of calls here or it's gonna take us X amount of time to get here. We have these emergencies over here. And so what we do is we, we plot that all out and then we actually come up with the best location and where we can actually put a new station to be able to manage and mitigate the growth and call demands to mm -hmm. be able to make sure that our services are going to be optimal, to make sure we can actually do the things that we're here to do. Describe to our viewers and people who are listening to us on radio as well, where we are physically, do you, on, you, are you near this baseball stadium? We uh, so we're, uh, we're actually going to be north of that. So we're mm -hmm. closer to uh, the slough, Six Mile Slough, the, mm -hmm. the nature preserve. We're, okay. we're right there, just uh, just south of Walmart on Ortez and Colonial, mm -hmm. uh, Heritage uh, Palms. Uh, so we actually have a pretty much the, the southern end of the city of Fort Myers. So that gives the opportunity to be able to, to run and respond going north. And so yeah. one of the things that uh, we look at, and it's just like anybody who's played sports, our fire stations are actually situated kind of like a defense, right? So we kind of like a defense, so mm -hmm. like a zone defense. Mm -hmm. So if one station is just tied up on an emergency, we need to have another station that can move over to be able to fill those voids. Mm. So it's really, if you've ever played zone defense, that's what our fire stations are designed to do, mm -hmm. is to be able to slide and move to be able to make sure we always have Yeah, I hated coverage. zone because I'm a lockdown defender. <laughs> On offense and yeah, defense. Yeah, 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 I'll yeah. Lock them down lock one on one, down. coach. Just, yeah, one on one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, but yeah, I, I see the, the concept. When I when I pull up, when we pull up on the station, especially my cameraman Skinny and showing the footage, but when we pull up on the station, it seems to fit into the decor of the neighborhood. Is that was that by design as well? Yeah, so all of our all of our stations, we always try to, you know, get our design team to go around and look at what is the flavor of the neighborhood mm -hmm. because we don't want to stand out like mm -hmm. a sore thumb. We want to be a good neighbors, as we always say. We want to make sure that our buildings and, and our systems in which we operate actually fits in because we want to be community oriented and part of that is actually looking like the community in which you're serving not just the people but also the buildings and when i was here yesterday out of the blue one of the cadets came up that posed have me pose this question he was in training he's gonna he's looking to become a firefighter in the future is that training always going on constantly or you have certain periods or intervals when training starts and people need to know about it if they're interested in being a firefighter or anything yeah. else related. So internally as a fire department, our, our, our folks, our staff are always training. There's a certain amount of hours that we need to hit, certain amount of courses we need to do, and then there's stuff that they just do on their own. Like I went to work this morning and we had our, our ladder truck up 110 feet up in the air and our crews were out there doing time trials. All right, cool, get in your gear, boom, 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 put on the gear and they extend all the way up 110 feet mm. to the bucket truck because that's something that we'll have to do on an emergency scene. So they want to prepare for that. So that's one aspect of it is that on the job, continual training. But when you're actually a new recruit, they actually have courses, different classes, different academies that they'll go to. Mm -hmm. And there are certain intervals that they have in which you can enroll in that, just like any other type of school, you know, semesters or, or course, course offerings that they can get involved in. I think it was, uh, is that was like, was that Michigan Avenue where you used to yes, have sir. Yes, these sir old buildings or something that y'all used to train in? Yeah, so there's actually- that still uh, some, y'all expanded that to some other areas as yeah, well? Yeah, and that's actually, that particular uh, facility is actually run through Lee County School District. Okay. They actually have a fire academy, uh, you know, 
Florida Southwestern has a, a fire academy as well really? as a private company called Braxton. So those are the three different fire schools here in Lee County that if you're here local or if you're from anywhere else, that you could actually attend to actually get trained to become a firefighter. They're not necessarily run by the fire departments, but they're staff members from each and every fire department that actually uh, work at those academies to ensure that they're getting, you know, most current, you know, education and making sure that they understand what the job's all about. So let me understand this now. You could be a student at the school. You would be a course that you would take would be fire academy or those are just purely fire academy schools. So, yeah, so the... Southwest Florida Public Service Academy is one on Michigan. Mm -hmm. They actually do law enforcement correction as well as fire and EMT. So they offer all the public safety type of realm. Of course, FSW being that of a you know a uh, you know a junior college, they right. actually have all the different you know from business to whatever. And then Braxton is actually a private school, so you can actually look at it just like anything and say, hey, look, I want to be a firefighter, and you can look at these th th three different schools and actually attend there. So if you go to uh, Southwest Florida Public Service Academy, you can say, hey, look, do I want to be, be a police officer? Do I want to be an EMT? Do I want to be really? a fire? And you can sign up for that particular course as a self-pay. Uh, possibly can use Stafford loans or Pell Grants and fund your education to be able to get into the first responder uh, job field. Then when they come out of those particular types of schools, when they come to say, they could go wherever they want to go, right? Yes, sir. They got their certain certifications. Yes, yes sir. But if they come to you, that certification means something, doesn't yes, it? Yes, sir. So that's our it minimum It speeds their process up. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So that'd be our, our minimum requirement. So we in the city of Fort Myers, we can hire uh, someone who's uncertified and then put them through school. Right. Uh, obviously, it's uh, fiscally more prudent if there's someone who's already has that education and can start with us day one. Mm -hmm. So we actually do a, a, you know, a myriad of different ways and different approaches with that. Mm -hmm. Sometimes in our culture and our time of our, our life cycle of our city, it's better to actually take folks and actually put them to school. Mm -hmm. Other times when we need someone right now, we'll actually go to the school and actually do some recruiting and say, hey, look, who do you have here? This is who we are. Come check us out. Application periods open up you know, on said date. And then we get folks that way. So firefighters in the city of Fort Myers are getting fair wage, fair benefits comparable to other cities of this size. I think so. I think so. And we're currently in a contract negotiations right now. Uh, and that's something that we always look at. We want to make sure, and even my mind as a fire chief, I want to make sure that our folks are actually well compensated because they are extremely well worth the, every penny that they will earn. Mm -hmm. So I know it's when we move around in the city of Fort Myers in particular, we see the city of Fort Myers firefighters at a lot of community events standing around with their minimal equipment on, but they're there, they're observing, they're shaking hands, they're talking to people. Oftentimes they're giving out water and things of that nature. Is that something that's, a, that's required as something that you as a fire chief want to see the, yeah. the, the officers involved with? So it's definitely not required. You know, mm -hmm. it's something that we could actually, you know, our, our sole purpose is what we say our four P's is, you know, preserve life, protect property, prevent harm, and promote excellence. That's what our four P's as the City of Fort Myers Fire Department is. So we take that fourth P, that promote excellence, and say part of promoting excellence is to be involved in our community. And when you're involved in your community, you can take care of those other three of those four P's protecting property, protecting, preventing harm, and also preserving life. So mm -hmm. when you actually make those relationships and you actually know your city because you're in your city, right? Mm -hmm. You're actually spending time doing the things that our, our citizenry is actually doing, then you become a part of that city and you can actually serve it a lot better. So mm -hmm. it's something that we have actually created as administrative uh, executive team to say, hey, look, we want to have a culture where we are community facing, that we're involved in our community, and we wanna know our people and we want our people to know us. City of Fort Myers has selected a new uh, police chief. Yes, yes. Uh, I want you to call his name and, and, and give your thoughts on the new selection. Yes, it's uh, Chief uh, Jason Fields. Um, I've known Jason for a long period of time, or I should say Chief Fields for a long period of time. He's an amazing individual, even better man, and definitely, definitely has served so many different areas within mm -hmm. uh, Fort Myers PD uh, as far as SWAT and Intel and just reaching out. And one of the things I just want to really just point out how good he is, is that he still to this day goes out to those academies that we talked about, 6.30, 7 o'clock in the morning and works out with the recruit classes, leads those recruits mm. in working out. 
then that's the type of individual that he is, that he's ready hands to on. sew in, hands on, ready to sew into the lives of the new officers. So uh, I'm, I'm glad, I'm looking forward to be able to serve with him. And, and I think we can do some really good stuff together. As citizens are listening to you right now, so that's a, that's a raving endorsement. You guys have heard it from the, uh, the fire chief that uh, we probably have a, a pretty good uh, police chief that's going to be taking over the reins. He's been on the show before, but not as the police chief. So we'll get, get him back in the future. Yes. Uh, the early on, you mentioned about people jogging. And I saw this last night in our, in, in, when I was here earlier that um, you make it available. This particular fire station where yes. people can come in and get water. It's an air conditioned area. There's a bathroom out there. Yes, they can sir. literally walk up in here yes, or sir. get off their bicycles or whatever and, and get relaxed. Talk about the, the logic behind that, because I, I, I'd never seen that at a fire station before. Yeah, and that goes to the, you know, that old school mindset of having community-based fire you know, departments and firehouses, fire stations. So this gives an opportunity for our public who pass by these beautiful fire stations, these beautiful buildings that are you know, municipal government, that they can actually know that this is something that is here for you. Mm -hmm. So we want to make sure that our people are actually well taken care of. We know it's extremely hot out there. Our heat indexes have been off the charts this year, uh, but it actually creates an opportunity for someone as they're exercising to come cool off for a second, get some water, get themselves hydrated. And then, you know, hopefully we can actually uh, interact a little bit. Mm -hmm. And that's something that actually gives us an opportunity to, to talk with our, our folks and be there again, community oriented. So cadet post about, yes. uh, Three months, two months ago, people saw my show where I interviewed uh, two firefighters and a member of your cadet post where young people can get exposed to the, to the career as a firefighter. Um, go ahead and expound on that a little bit about your program. Uh, encourage people again that they can get involved and how they can go yeah. about it. So it's an amazing program, and we actually were able to, to reestablish it. Had been going on for a long period of time that took a little hiatus, so it's back going. But this is a great uh, program for youth who are actually 14 to uh, 18 years old, and they actually can get involved in this. And what we do here is actually teach fire service, but in doing that, in teaching fire service, we actually teach life. We teach our young folks how to be responsible, accountable, pre productive, to actually be thinking about initiative as well as we're able to actually be a, another bit of uh, village, if you will, uh, another part of that tribe where they have other adults that they can reach out to. And so we're all about building people, mm -hmm. building mindsets, and being able to create a new future. So our Fort Myers Cadet Program, they're actually going to be traveling up to a competition, one of their first uh, competitions since that hiatus. Got high hopes for them. But it's a great way for us, actually, to, to build our youth and be a part of the youth. I just think forward. it's an outstanding program, and I've talked to you offline about getting involved with it. I won't talk about it now, but once it rolls out, I'll certainly get my television show involved with it. The, let's talk about the most important thing before we let you go, the mustache. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, Interesting sir. history behind that because people may recall that we didn't see you in that mustache, say, two, three years ago, right? No, sir. No, Tell sir. that little story you told me. Yeah, so, you know, it, it's a thing I've always been clean cut. I actually used to run a little pencil-thin mustache. Uh -huh. and, uh, so we do Movember. Every November we celebrate or try to support uh, prostate uh, cancer awareness. And so we grow out our mustaches and we typically shave it right, right off. And mm -hmm. uh, so this time I said, I'm going to do a little joke. I'm just going to let this thing get real bushy right. and just so obnoxious. And, and uh, people could tell me to shave it off, you know. And, and so I did it as a joke and it actually backfired on me. Right. Uh, people just love it. You know, right. it's become it's a really thing. really cool. Got little stickers with it now. It's kind of become a, uh -huh. you know, a, a thing to come to expect. So yeah. uh, um, I guess it's going to be here for it a while. Makes you look a thousand times better. So I know that's a compliment. <laughs> <laughs> but that's a cool mustache, yes, like yes, uh, like the old baseball player. Yeah. Stuff. Did you ever curl it before, like the, the, the handlebar? Too? Yeah, I, I play with it at times and times. I, you know, sometimes I'll get a whole bunch of wax on there and kind of do a curl it up. But it kind of keeps it that old, traditional, old school fire department look. Big mustaches, burly, you know, cats with helmets and all that stuff. So it's a throwback to it. Final question. The state of the city of Fort Myers fire department is what? Excellent. We have some amazing staff, you know, great men and women who come here each and every day, give 110 percent. They're out there doing the job, as he talked about, engage in our community. Uh, we have good opportunities for them to grow and to excel and to advance in the career. Um, we're doing really, really well. And our culture is strong. People are excited to come to work. We laugh, we joke, we have fun, but we get 
the job done. So we're in an amazing state. Well, we're very proud of you and your staff and keeping Thanks. us safe around here. We'll be talking to, in, in, in the coming weeks, we'll be talking to Katrina. Was it Catherine? The, uh, uh, Christy, Christy, Christy Matthews, yes. Yeah, she'll be yeah, keeping emergency us safe manager. as well. Yeah, right, yes. but, uh, we're going to talk to her, but I want to get you in on it too about this heat. Go ahead, tip, give some, some quick safety tips. Yeah, it's extremely hot. Everybody knows this. So there's things that we need to do. Make sure you hydrate yourselves uh, more so than not. Most people walk around uh, day to day dehydrated. Drink as much water and hydration electrolytes that you can to stay hydrated. Be real mindful of different tasks that you have to do. So if there's some yard work, try to do that maybe later in the afternoon or earlier in the morning versus right middle 12 o'clock gotcha. where it's the hottest of the whole time. I, mean, I keep hearing all these temperatures like the hottest on earth that we've had in recorded time. Oh yeah, it is extremely And then warm. you guys have on those, uh, the firemen have on that heavy stuff and all of that. So yes, sir. Yes, sir. Safety is uh, important all around. It, it is. And even ourselves, we had actually changed some of the things that we do. So we, you know, change our policy from our polos that we wear our would suit where they just wear t-shirts during this rest of the summer because really? it's so extremely hot that we want to make sure our responders are there again not being overheated uh, just for the looks. It's not something to uh, relax about being over. No, sir. Yeah. Us regular people have no idea doing. No, no. And that's, <laughs> and that's one of the things also too our fire department has and some people have seen it. Uh, we have a hot car. We have actually partnered with Galasano Hospital, Children's Hospital. Mm -hmm. And we have a, one of our Ford Explorers that we've actually wrapped and we have the heat meter out there. And we had one day, Lee, it was down at Centennial Park. It was 159 degrees inside of the vehicle. Mm. And so we have that hot car out there as a reminder to us as parents and those individuals. Just be make sure you look twice. Make sure that your kids and your animals are not left in those cars because it is so, so hot out there. Thanks for hosting Lee Pitts Live here at your station. My pleasure, sir. Thank you for being here. OK. As the saying goes on this particular show, for those who say it can't be done, they're usually interrupted by those like our fine fire chief. Tracy McMillian. Also, remember, Miami may have the oranges, but the city of Fort Myers Fire Department has got the juice. They got the juice. We'll see you. Lee Pitts Live is a Lee Pitts Enterprise production. Hello, everybody. This is Lee. I'm so glad that you watched that particular show. And if you enjoyed that show, we got other shows like that. Just subscribe to our YouTube channel. Watch Lee Pitts Live on demand anytime. And also hit us up on all our social media platforms. Just type in Lee Pitts Live and there you go.